Hello everyone. Today we have a um, well arachnid episode. Let's say maybe we'll also see a centipede. Uh, here we are with the green bottle blue tarantula, and I'm trying to get. her exivium out, which is basically her, with snake terms, her shed skin out. And as you can see I got it out partially, this is one portion of it. And the remaining portion comes out. So, as you can see, it is a um, basically it looks like a dead spider and a lot of people who don't know spiders actually think that giving it more light so you can see the colors this is actually a spider however it obviously isn't it is the shed skin of a spider and you can see the colors beautifully and the animal looks much better I'm sure um, but uh, she is still hiding. I saw her yesterday. She was ready to hunt. She was putting her legs out. So we are hoping that you know she will come out to feed. But she's deep in her barrel, and you will probably won't see her feeding, unfortunately. But it's good to see her again, exuvium. And let's see. I'm just gonna get some. Roaches. All right. Uh, this is a Chalfordella lateralis or Blatta lateralis. The common name is Turkistan roach. They're also called uh, chocolate roaches or red runners. This is an adult female. They are very good feeders for especially smaller tarantulas because they do not play dead. They do not hide. And they are... Um, they get You can get a very good feeding response out of them. And the protein ratio uh, here is a lot higher than uh, crickets which are basically husks. And these are also very good feeders for um, lizards as well. Again, unfortunately, we didn't get to see any action here. Uh, the roach went inside the barrel right away looking for a dark place. And I'm sure the tarantula got her in there easily. Um, green bottle blue tarantulas, the tarantula that we have here. Chromatophalmus cyanopvescens is the Latin name. Um, they are great hunters. Uh, they they are usually outside, and it's really good to watch them hunt. They're quite active, but unfortunately we don't get to see that today. So sorry for a little less action-packed video, but let's get to another arachnid. All right, this is the next one. The next critter, I'm just gonna move it a little bit out, move her a little bit out, so we can see her. Yeah, that's a Parabutus villosus. It's a ticktail scorpion. Well, I don't think that's the uh, correct common name for these guys. I think, but it's one of the ticktail scorpion species. Uh, its venom is quite effective and quite dangerous against humans as well. They come from Namibia, Africa. Uh, this is the orange morph. And we will give it we will give her one roach and see what she does. And as you can see she doesn't do anything. This is another not much action packed video. Uh, and boom, 
she gets the roach inside her barrel. You see, uh, we can see the talson and the stinger right there. Um, these do use their venom to hunt. Unfortunately, <laughs> again, when you have hide boxes or hiding places for your animals, which you should have, um, sometimes the action goes unfilmable, let's say and the roach went into the dark hiding place and the scorpion got the roach in the hiding place now let's see if we can move her out a little bit Nope, doesn't want to come out and it looks like this is going to be a fail segment just to make things a little interesting. Here is an excited cobra for you. Uh, my Samar cobra ate yesterday and uh, she's still looking for food so at least we get to see a beautiful snake. Alright, I will get to the next critter. Alright, the next animal is something we usually get a reaction from. So we should be able to see this one hunt if she's not in molt. Uh, this is a Terrafossa blondi, also known as Goliath bird eater tarantula. This is a true blondi from French Guiana. And you can easily see that from all the hairs on her legs, basically. And I will give her a Dubia Roach and see what happens. She usually does not disappoint. And boom, as you can see, she is a monster when it comes to hunting and she never misses. Now this light is probably really irritating her eyes, so I'm going to turn off the light. And we can see her under more of a natural light. And if I remove myself from the shadows, you can see that she has this very dark chocolate brown color and she is basically um, covered with hair and the hair on her abdomen are the hairs that you should really watch out for because they are very irritating to human skin and some people can show really a severe allergic reaction to it. Now natives in the uh, French Guiana they eat these spiders but what they do is they cook them on campfires and they burn off all the hair then they basically suck the meat inside their legs. Um, again other people's food are other people's pets and you know these animals being rare in the hobby uh, <laughs> makes me a little sad that they become campfire food but life works the way it does as you can see she's using her uh, silk to cover the ground can easily visible uh, they do this occasionally when they're feeding um, and I'm sure you heard the crunching noises when she was basically moving her fangs into the prey. Now what tarantulas do and what spiders do is they have venom and they use this venom to liquefy the prey. And then they suck the prey dry. Uh, they cannot chew, they cannot eat pieces like scorpions do for example. They can only uh, basically 
suck liquid so they pump venom and their uh, digestive juices into the prey and once it's nice then digested and soupy they basically drink it that's how it works All right she is doing her thing and I don't think we need to disturb her more but that's a goliath bird eater tarantula Terfasa blondi. Uh, Terfasa has three identified species. Uh, blondi, Apophyses, and then the burgundy one, the third one. Um, I would say blondi is probably the rarest. Acanthof uh, Apophyses is also uh, quite rare in the hobby. The burgundy bird eater can be easily found, but most of those animals are wild caught and they have uh, molting issues. This is a captive bred spider and she's quite healthy. Now I can understand spider uh, fearing people, the agnophobic people, to get really scared of this thing because she is, if you look at it, she's quite big and they are the heaviest spiders in the world, the Terraphosa genus. Yeah, the roach is obviously still alive, and it will be alive for a while. And it's, you know, it's not fun to watch animals die, but these animals technically do not feel pain. So, uh, even though they are dying, they don't suffer much. Alright, I think that's good footage of the uh, Terrafossa, and a little more excited, uh, exciting compared to what we have seen before. I just wanted to quickly get back to the Chromatophelma cyanopubescens, the green bottle blue tarantula. She got out of her barrel with the roach, uh, and you can see the roach's antenna there, still moving around, so it's you know quite alive. Um, but I think she didn't feel uh, very secure in the barrel because the roach was probably had more places to touch inside there in a confined environment, and she got out and we got to see her beautiful colors. Uh, this tarantula is I think quite underrated in the hobby. They are you know to use the word correctly I mean they're common you can easily find them. Uh, they are very beautiful they are medium sized spider they are uh, they have uh, hairs that you know you can get a reaction against but they are not as bad as many other species out there and also they're almost always out so you can watch them you know do their thing and hunt and they web a lot so I think they're great great tarantula to keep and they're also very easy to take care of they just need a dry environment basically a small water dish um, is good to have but not a must and they actually make beautiful terrariums if you give them space. In fact, they can be semi arboreal and they can build webs into bushes. So I think they're a very neat tarantula. I'll try to introduce some light. As you can see, they have this beautiful greenish blue color that they are named for. All right. At least we got to see the spider, even we, even though we didn't get to see her hunt. Alright, let's finish up with this. 
it's not going to be a feeding one um, as I think the animal is in molt. It's good to see. It's good to see it. So I can manage to show it to you guys. This is my Indian tiger centipede, the only centipede I was ever interested in. And I think it's an amazing looking animal. And I have uh, filmed it before actually even on my hand even though they have some you know quite uh, disturbing venom um, they can be handled as they are not lethal centipedes are not arachnids they are myropods uh, and they are very fast animals as you can see from the jerky movements um, this one had fed a few giant roaches and other things, so I don't think it's hungry, uh, but it's quite active, as you can see, and I think it's a totally beautiful animal to work with. You got to be very careful, centipedes get out of, you know, the tiniest cracks and uh, they can easily escape, and this, even though this is categorized as a giant centipede, to use the word loosely, um, they can fit into very nice places. As you can see, it's growing. Uh, that's a bottle cap for a size reference. So it's getting bigger, but it has also a lot of growing to do, and they actually grow quite slowly. Now I will put a roach in there and see what happens. But I don't think it is hungry. Yeah, as you can see, we already have a roach there. So uh, there's, there's no reason to put another one in there. Um, it just ate a couple big dubias and now uh, getting ready basically uh, to molt. And they eat their molt as well. So I have never found a shed skin in there because centipedes, they do eat their molts. as a close-up you can see the last two legs and we could see it before it moved are modified and that's how they deliver their venom and their venom uh, has some very interesting properties but from what I have heard people who got bitten by large centipedes they really suffered and there has been some side effects like shortness of breath and uh, increased heart rates a lot of pain so, you know, it's not, it's not a good thing to be bitten by, to tell you the truth. Oh, there's even baby crickets in there, or baby roaches. And you see the cleaning crew working on the remaining roach. So it's, a, it's an actually a live and active environment. Alright, I think um, this is a good place to stop. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll have another video for you next week. Bye.